He says there's a lack of urgency in Washington on this issue. Does your administration bear responsibility for that? It is no secret for anyone that we have a broken immigration system, and it needs to be fixed. And it would be great if we could get some bipartisan consensus to do just that. And uh, I think it's a tragedy that there are certain so-called leaders who are playing politics with this issue. Our first bill, the first bill right after inauguration that President Biden put before Congress was to fix our immigration system. Do you think that they've taken it up? No. Mm. So that's the bill that's in the Senate right now. That's kind of a rehash of the amnesty bill that almost passed in 2016 that the House Freedom Caucus ultimately ended up nixing. Welcome back to the program. Top of this third hour. Dana Lash here with you. And that was something that was just said, too, by Raskin in the House Oversight and Accountability Committee hearing. He was saying, oh, they're blocking the border deal. Uh, they're, and, and he's so dumb about it. And he's trying to act like, oh, they're blocking the, the border deal. It's the rehash of, again, the 2018 amnesty bill that was partially had been partially authored by Ryan uh, that almost passed with the White House's approval at the time. In fact, they had endorsed it and were promoting it. And then it ended up being uh, started falling apart. And then defeated and it never went anywhere, finally. Uh, but it came very close to going somewhere. We almost had 1.8 million people who entered illegally to get amnesty. And the bill that's in the Senate right now that McConnell's, uh, watch, I feel like he's sitting back and kind of watching some of the strategy on this because he hasn't moved too much publicly on it. Uh, he's sort of letting everyone else kind of hang themselves with it. But a lot, the you know, the establishment in the, and the Senate has been uh, really pushing this, and who knows? I mean, we'll see where it, where it goes, but there, I mean, this is, again, one of the reasons why people get so dissatisfied with the RNC and the GOP, because of this stuff, because of this. I mean, I and the way that the Hill, I thought, was dumb, I thought the Hill story isn't exactly accurate. Because they're, they're trying to blame it on Trump and saying, oh, Trump told them that. I mean, this is literally like the exact kind of a bill that he supported in 2018. So I think that they're just trying to, you know, trying to enrage the independence over it. I, it it's, it's just goofy. And so this, um, the, the, Kamala Harris, but we played that audio of her. She's speaking about this. The House is, is putting pressure on and... This is they're doing everything that they can, everything that they can uh, to try to uh, emotionally blackmail, for the lack of a better way to put it, Republicans into doing this. And the Republicans aren't fighting it. They're not fighting it. I mean, where's the this gets into why I have such a major problem with that with that party. I have a major problem problem with them right now but I'm telling you I feel like the Republican Party is 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 being I think it's being co-opted and well it has been and people are being encouraged to accept big government positions and excuse them as being kind of like America first stuff and I've said this before again and I'll say it again for the drive-bys I will steamroll over your all grandmothers first to win 2024. But I just want people to be aware, you know, being for amnesty for 1.8 million people and then being for seize the guns and I want a bump stock ban and all this stuff. That's not a con. None of those are constitutional America first positions. None of them are. People just need to realize this. So. I don't know. We'll see. But they, the Democrats have been playing this game. I don't know if they're going to get uh, Republicans to cave on it. But I do know I wanted to bring up this story. So the buses that have been going from Texas to Illinois, uh, Abbott halted seizing of those buses, according to reporting. And this was after Pritzker was begging to stop. But it's not because of Pritzker. It's a temporary pause uh, because of the weather only. That's it. It's just because of the weather. And then when the ice is, I told you, Texas shuts down if there's like a spot of ice on the ground. Now it's starting to warm up today. So I would imagine that uh, I would imagine that it will. They'll resume pretty quickly. So 
They said that the buses with illegal aliens that have been have been going from Chicago or to Chicago from Texas, they haven't gone for the last couple of days because it's been very cold and the weather conditions, the ice on the roads, which is true. And they said that uh, the uh, freezing temperatures, et cetera, they don't they, you also don't want to break down too. you don't want to break down on the road as you're going. out. It's kind of a haul. How long is it to Chicago? It's 11 hours from Dallas to St. Louis. So what, 15? Then another four and a half or so from St. Louis to Chicago. Yeah. And I would imagine you have to stop once, right? Or no? Oh, yeah. You mean from Dallas to there? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. A, a few times, yeah. actually, depending on the size of your gas tank. Yeah. So there you go. But they, Pritzker's been begging, please don't send any more. But it's just the weather right now. He has sent, so far, Texas has sent up over 100,000 illegal aliens to sanctuary cities. That was 30,800 that they sent to Chicago. And, uh, yeah, 30,800, that's the total so far. And then now they're going to start sending again as the buses, as the weather is cooperating. And you don't have, like, the ice storms, etc. So that's going to happen. And what usually people don't mention is that when... People come across the border illegally and they're put on these buses. They're asked, where do you want to go? And they say, oh, I want to go to Chicago or I want to go to New York. That's where I want to go. That's what they say. It's like nobody's making anybody do this stuff. That's where they say they want to go. So another just the fact that there's that many to even send is wild to me. It's just wild. And still no corrections on this stuff. None. None. I mean, you didn't even really get any corrections when they were trying to say that people were using horse reins to whip people crossing illegally. This was just over the summer. They've never corrected any of it, ever. Uh, none of it. And now the same thing with this whole situation with the uh, uh, kids that had drowned at the border. And they were trying to blame it on our Texas Guard, which is asinine this reminds me of the uh do you remember that it was a pulitzer prize winning uh photographer a guy with getty and he took pictures of like there was this one girl two-year-old girl crying at the u.s mexico border and they were trying to act like oh it's because the she was separated from her mother and that's why no she was just having a she was tired and hungry and having a tantrum because her irresponsible mother dragged her hundreds of miles from home in the middle of the night and illegally crossed into a country so asinine. But this is the stuff that they're, the narratives that they're trying to, they're trying to promote. And then they went after our guard. Oh, they're blocking the guard. They're from, or they're blocking the border patrol from saving these, these people. And nobody, there's only been like two corrections. Washington Post never corrected anything. Henry Cuellar never corrected it. Uh, Axios never corrected it. Uh, and that was, and the true story is that Mexican authorities had an issue on the Mexico side of the Rio and, uh, border patrol wasn't even made aware of it until after not only people had drowned, but they were apparently removed from the river. And then they tried to blame it on the Texas guard for not allowing them through Shelby park because they wouldn't be able to access Shelby park because the, the feds were told to assist the cartels in letting people in. And so the Texas governor and, and the guard are like, no, we're not doing that. So they closed down that passing point, that crossing point, to stop them. They're helping the cartels make millions of dollars a week. Our own federal government, by telling the Border Patrol to assist the cartels in getting people in. Lift up that razor wire. Lift it all up. Help them in. Asinine. But I, honestly, that's the, language, that's, that's the language that Republicans need to use in talking about this. The video and the photographs that have been taken showing that happening, how can you not be enraged? And it's and Henry Cuellar owes a lot of people an apology. Shame on him. He owes a lot of people an apology for running with this false narrative and impugning the characters and endangering the lives of Texas Guard members by calling them murderers and saying that they purposefully blocked anybody from helping people drowning in a river when... They didn't even, had no clue, and it happened on the Mexico side. Mexican authorities already dealt with it, even confirmed that, and then the feds had to come quietly back later and say, okay, yeah, we were wrong, and here's the correct version of events. You absolute rat bastards. Shame on you, Henry Cuellar. 
absolute shame. 